missionaries of blessing youth mission stationed in jabalpur madhya pradesh we felt that god wanted us to move to a centrally located big city and start a ministry for the google generation that was the burden and when ivan and i prayed god led us to the city of hyderabad frankly speaking we didn't have enough faith to just blindly pack our bags and leave that's when the invitation of india missions association to come and join them gave us that encouragement that faith that confidence so we packed our bags dale was about 2 years old not yet 2 he was a little boy uh just sh- short of 2 years and ivan dale little dale i should say and myself travel from jabalpur and came to hyderabad it was october 2005 and after i started working in india missions association i realized that i had to reach the google generation of hyderabad and from their india by starting my own organization and i've been with the uh, assembly of god as a youth pastor i've been a blessing youth mission missionary and i've been a india missions association staff while i learned key things from these three organizations i felt for me to execute the call that god placed in my heart to grab the google generation from going to gehenna gehenna is the word that jesus used for hell i needed to start my own ministry so i quit ima india missions association in the end of the month of november i should i guess and in the month of december after my wife and i had a conversation i started attending call center interviews you say well that doesn't make sense let me explain i wanted to be a tent making missionary i wanted to support myself and then use my spare time to reach the google generation and god in his gracious mercy gave me a call center job it was with the third party call center called 24 by 7 i started working there and after i got my first salary which came at the end of the month of jan 2006 with that money i prepared a magazine called the days of your youth it is a name that god had given me uh, a few months earlier from that classic verse in ecclesiastes chapter 12 remember your creator in the days of your youth so the days of your youth would be a magazine for grabbing the google generation from gana mission a ministry that we would start in february 2006 and this magazine would wrap bible truth around contemporary events jesus did that in luke chapter 13 1 through 5 he talked about two events that the people noticed and he preached a message of repentance which was wrapped around those two events so jesus was my model i was trying to be a imperfect copy of jesus so we would have a contemporary story and we would wrap bible to the round that i remember wrapping bible to the round the way which a malia hired air hostesses in one of the early issues i remember talking about the greatest odi between south africa and australia and wrapping bible truth around it so that's when we started february 2006 and i was working in the call center i was doing a night shift i would come back home early morning after having worked through the night 
it was 2006. And God in His mercy helped me to start a prayer fellowship in that call center, 24 by 7. We would go to the canteen area, a few of us, two or three of us, and for two or three minutes, standing in one corner, an area where others would not generally come, we prayed. And in my prayer, I prayed for the people there and I prayed for God's blessing upon the company. And occasionally I also used to share Bible truth for those in the workplace, truths that God had given me. But then at the end of that year, 2006, God was merciful to give me a, a job with a better company, HSBC Global Resourcing. I was thrilled to work in an international bank as a back end of, in the back end office. I was in the auto department, uh, auto loans department. My customers lived in America. Our bank's customers lived in America. And sitting in Hyderabad, I used to talk to them and recover loans from them. I did a good job. Uh, one, one time I, I was called and uh, my call was played as a model call to convert an irate customer. A customer would use abusive language and how I converted that irate customer to a customer who paid money or paid back his loan to our company. And God gave me the grace to do it. But I was very, very tired and stressed as I did that night shift increasingly. In, in the year 2007, our daughter Dadasha was born and here I was in this uh, call center, HSBC Global Resourcing Call Center, working through the night. I had sleep issues. Uh, I felt I couldn't carry on this way. I had to either quit my ministry and the magazine publishing and and I also was traveling at that time. During this time, when I was working in the call center, I had traveled to Kolkata to preach God's word. And I traveled to Coimbatore to preach God's word. I remember traveling to a, a little town in Maharashtra to preach God's word while I was working. For the Maharashtra trip, my wife joined me and like she has joined me for many preaching trips, sharing the pulpit responsibility along with me. If I had five sessions, she would do one or two sessions and while I did the rest. And we have been co-preaching in several camps over the years. So I was traveling and preaching. I was publishing the magazine Days of Your Youth and we were giving out tracts, tracts which I myself wrote the bubbly tract and the doni tract. Bubbly outside and empty inside. Uh, the doni tract uh, came after India won the T20 World Cup in 2007. And it had a description of what Jesus endured for us on the cross. But it began with what doni endured the back spasms and whatnot he endured to take India to a win in 2011 World Cup. And he had stories from the 2007 World Cup, both of which India won. One was a T20 and the other was a ODI World Cup. So we had two tracks. So we were giving tracks along, joined by volunteers. I was traveling and preaching and I was here working the call center. At that time, 2007, I was invited by the Daniels, Daniel and Magdalene, who had a flat in Somajiguda, uh, a fairly large flat of, uh, with a big hall, which could seat 30, 40 people. Uh, they came home and Ivan was pregnant at that time. They came home and invited us to start a Bible study. So as I was praying, I, God led me to remember what I learned from my teacher and Southern Asia Bible College when I did my MDiv there. Uh, what Dr. Jacob Chirin taught me, my teacher, Dr. Jacob Chirin, 
uh, challenged me, not taught me. He challenged the class, and I just took it very personally. He said, "Don't keep on preaching from the same old passage, uh, passage that you're familiar with. Make it your goal to preach from every book of the Bible." So, I had an opportunity. Here was a couple inviting me to start Bible studies in the home, in the church, in the denominational Bible study, not a church, uh, but a. Uh, a Bible study group which had no agenda but just to help people grow in God's word and become strong disciples of Jesus Christ. So it, it was going to be once a month, and I was still in HSBC when I started it, and I began the first study in in 2007 from the on the book of Amos, uh, a little known minor prophet for most of the people who attended, and this journey took us a long time. In fact, I think it took us seven long years, seven long years to complete the 66 books. Uh, at times, uh, I would take a break in the month of February. I used to do a Valentine Day special Bible study. On one, one time I did a Bible study on how to handle romantic rejections. Uh, and there are other kinds of special Bible studies that we did on the month of February. But the other months, we continue to journey through the Bible, not in any particular order. But when we did 2 Timothy, the book of 2 Timothy, in a home that we live for rent behind the Kanaji Gura petrol bunk, there was a group of people who came and I taught them 2 Timothy, and that was the last book. Uh, that we summarized. I used to use an acronym method. I used to take the name of the book uh, and use that name as an acronym for the uh, for the message of that book. So Timothy would mean T I M O T H Y, and there's a there was a point for T, and there was a point for I, and and all the way till the last letter Y, and so on and so forth. I did that for all the books. One day, if God would extend my life or if his coming is delayed, I would put all those outlines he gave me in the form of a book. And not just that, uh, later on, I, in the same home, I started another series where I summarized all the major doctrines of the Bible. This time it took us nearly four years from the doctrine of God all the way to the doctrine of hell. The last doctrine, by the time we did the last doctrine Bible study, attended by a group of working professionals, group of students and uh, people young and old, Nalraj uncle and, and, and his wife, Grace, Auntie Grace, they would invariably show up for most of the studies. And uh, we had Shailesh, uh, one of my students uh, in the Bible college, uh, leading worship. So these Bible studies were summarizing doctrine, again, using the acronym method. When we studied Antichrist, we used the, used the name A-N-T-I-C-H-R-I-S-T to teach people there what the Bible taught about Antichrist and so on and so forth. Doctrine of man, doctrine of sanctification, doctrine of uh, church and we journeyed through all the major doctrines of the Bible. People from various backgrounds were blessed. So, in the month of November 2008, I quit my HSBC job. I did get a decent salary at that time, though I was only a customer service executive. Uh, I was actively encouraged by my wife to stop searching for more jobs now that I had an experience of almost three years in a call center. I did in fact get invitations to join a couple of companies but my wife said don't switch your job stop working and continue to work full time for the ministry that you have started and I will support you. What a woman of faith. If I had married any other girl I'm not so sure, sure if I've got the kind of support that I got from a van. Uh, I really praise God for her. She's a woman of faith. So this is happening in November 2008. 
and then I became full time with my own ministry. So I had more time. So we we I started working on a book. Uh, I wanted to bring out a book that brought, brought Bible teaching on sex, love, marriage. I was inspired by Zach Bonin's book, brother Zach Bonin's book. Uh, when I was growing up on similar topics, but God was giving me f- uh, fresh messages on these very topics. And I had started writing articles on that topic. For example, a young woman came and asked us a specific question, gave her the answer and wrote the answer, uploaded it on Facebook. And one of the regulars uh, who used to come to the Bible study at that time, uh, a young man who now lives in the US with his wife, Kalyan said, uh, after reading that reply, uh, that was not actually Kalyan's question, it was another person's question. But Kalyan read my reply and said, this is the kind of reply that young people need to hear straight from the Bible. So that was the making of the book Straight Talk. So in 2010, we had the first edition of Straight Talk. And in 2018, we had the second edition of Straight Talk. By that time, we had covered 40 topics masturbation, porn, and whatnot. And in 2020, we had 50 topics covered in straight talk, uh, sexting, and a whole lot of uh, Q and A's also incorporated as uh, chapters. Is oral sex okay inside of marriage? And questions like that answered in that book. and Word of Christ publishers published it. So I had more time, I was writing books, and then we had this systematic track distribution, which uh, people like Arul Johnson and Sherry Roy and Vineet used to join. Uh, I remember Emilia joining for a few track distributions. We had different people, Hudson, uh, so many different people joining for track distributions at different times, Pratyusha. Uh, we would give tracts outside colleges, we could give tracts outside corporate offices, we could give tracts in traffic junctions, we'd give tracts in, in railway stations, secondary bad railway station, we have done that uh, several times. And after the track distribution was over, I would again bring a short message wrapped around a contemporary event that happened a few days ago. Uh, and then challenge them to keep evangelizing, keep getting involved in personal evangelism. The magazine also was running, you know, we had, in fact, by, the, by 2020, uh, by 2020, we had published 50 different editions of the Days of Your Youth on various topics. Uh, one, to- one, one issue, uh, we addressed the question of suffering. Why me, Lord? And it had a picture of a girl weeping. In fact, a pic- that girl was in one of our uh, the youth camps that my wife and I preached in in Maharashtra. We took her permission and used her picture on the cover. Eugen Pandian was the magazine cover designer. Eugen Pandian, uh, my college contemporary, my secular college contemporary. I did agriculture engineering in North India in Allahabad Agriculture Institute, now known as Shuats. And Eugen was my uh, contemporary, my junior, and Eugen became one of our key design volunteers. And we also used to do DVDs at that time, uh, long before the inter- internet revolution sort of completely swept us off. We used to do DVDs, uh, and we had volunteers like Ruby Evangel and others who designed DVD covers for us. Uh, and another event that we also began was the Fountain of Tears Against Mofnafia's Fasting Prayer, where we prayed for the nations, the nation, the Google generation, and finally your tension and my tension. And when we prayed for people with your people with tensions, like for example, a couple married for several years, uh, without children. God did miracles. I'm sure many others prayed for the same couple, but my wife and I prayed 
and got it a miracle and now they have a boy and just a few days ago a girl as well we are amazed at what god did that is just one of the miracles there are other miracles that took place in the fountain of tears against mount of fierce fasting prayer which is based on jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 1 and jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 10 uh, my wife used to lead in prayer for the personal prayer points your tension and my tension in this prayers we had month and midnight prayers uh, those days on location so we had young people come to our house at 11 30 until 12 30 we had prayer and some of them would uh, would be talking to us uh, at midnight hour and and we had even uh, a room where they could go and rest uh, uh, one room for the boys one room for the girls and uh, again get up have breakfast with them our home our base was a place frequented by Google Jenners and we tried our best to serve them in the Spirit of Christ, answering their questions, teaching the Word of God to them, praying with them. And we were so glad that many of them became strong disciples of Jesus Christ. So that's our Hyderabad story. And God, in His mercy, moved several Indians to give for our ministry. So one of our first gifts was a desktop, a HP desktop that we got. Later, someone gifted us a Dell laptop. And then later on, uh, when, the, when the Android phones came in, we, we got a phone uh, which is called the Motorola Milestone, which was my, my first smartphone with which I sent several messages inviting people for Bible study, fountain fasting prayer, track distribution. And then little later on, somebody gifted us a Nokia Lumia 1520. These phones really overworked inviting people for meetings, especially designed for the Google gener generation. And uh, we got a GoPro uh, Hero 4 camera, GoPro Hero 4 camera, uh, because I wanted to record almost everything I preached, because I would record it and that would go to a YouTube. And, and when I'm speaking these words to you, we almost have 1,700 videos on our YouTube channel, uh, YouTube slash Visit Duke. Some of them have very few hits, maybe 20 hits or less than that. But some of them do have a lot of hits, uh, which encourages me. So I guess uh, some messages bless that one individual, while some of the messages bless a little more number of people. And then somebody gifted us a Sony Handycam, which slightly improved our recording. And later came the Asus Swiftfire laptop and uh, and then finally the MacBook Pro through the sacrificial giving of an Indian living in India uh, with the M1 chip and I'm actually recording this audio message from that. So God was moving Indian donors to give us offerings with which we used to buy gadgets to further effectively reach out to the Google generation. We had a SoundCloud account by now and we had a full-fledged uh, website just for articles called Duke Words and uh, we had uh, an Instagram page and God was blessing the ministry. Uh, we had a desktop which someone gifted us in 2013 end of 2013, Dell, uh, Dell All-in-One, which I still use. Uh, and it's there on my desk. So God was very, very gracious. New version, uh, the popular Bible app, invited me to write some articles and one article, one plan, and I, there are several plans of mine in that, uh, in that app, U version, uh, devotions. 
uh, one devotion on how to overcome porn temptation uh, I'm told has uh, more than a lakh downloads a lot of people downloading it so God was leading us day by day week after week month after month uh, we stayed in fairly comfortable homes and every month during these last 16 years God has given us the grace to pay the rent before the fifth of the month uh, fifth of that particular month God has been very faithful God has been very faithful that's what I can say uh, my children were growing up and uh, you know, my, as I said my daughter was born here in Hyderabad uh, my son used to shoot some of my videos. Uh, my daughter has sold uh, the books after the meetings were over. Uh, they used to memorize scripture and uh, and recite it before congregation, before the congregation as we used to travel. Travel, I need to talk about travel because God graciously used us in not less than 16 to 20 different churches, it could be more. Uh, I did a count, at least 16 different churches and then a, a few more as well, uh, sometimes repeatedly in some, uh, uh, the sometimes repeatedly in, in a particular church. The invitation used to come and I used to uh, look at my schedule, pray and say yes and preach. And each time I, I would like to, I wanted to preach a different message uh, as uh, these invitations kept coming, uh, I would I wanted to preach at least one fresh message in every trip uh, that I made. Of course, there are some messages which I repeated, especially the ones on overcoming sexual temptation. But I tried to preach that from fresh passages, uh, fresh Bible passages, Bible passages that were not familiar to the audience, and Bible passages I dived into. Uh, before the meeting and pulled out truth for from. So God was good. God is good. God is always good. So outside of Hyderabad, all the way to Punjab and Jharkhand and West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Orissa, all these states, I have received invitation to preach God's word. In some places, my wife has traveled along to preach God's word along with me. Uh, in Hyderabad, as well as outside of Hyderabad. In fact, in fact, even outside the country, there was a time when we traveled to Singapore together to preach God's word in the year 2011 and to Bangladesh to preach God's word together. There were, we traveled to Oman uh, somebody wanted our family to come there for a holiday, a dear uncle. And even in Oman, I, in a, in a, in a room, in, in, the, in, the, in the small flat that we were staying in, in Salala, I preached a message to the screen which I recorded, which is on YouTube, our First Timothy Bible study. So God has been gracious. I, when I'm not preaching on a Sunday morning, along with my family, I went to my local church, went to the local church. I'm not a pastor, I'm an evangelist. I don't run a church. G4 mission is interdenominational, but I go to a local church and we go there. Every the Sundays, we are not ministering. We are there to listen to the message, to be built up in our inner man. And that local church sent me one, uh, on a mission trip to, to the Bhutan border. Uh, along with a senior man of God and his wife and the three of us traveled and we trained pastors there in the border, 50 pastors. I taught God's word to them. Uh, then in the year 2019, there was an invitation to travel to Dubai and preach God's word to a bunch of youth. Every time I'm invited to preach, the organizer pays for the ticket, even organizers overseas, they pay for the ticket and they mail it to me and I print the ticket and hop onto the plane, go and preach God's word. And I always try to preach what the Holy Spirit will have me tell them straight from scripture without compromise. 
and then the altar calls we can talk all day about the altar calls the altar calls in hyderabad uh, for salvation for holy living uh, to overcome porn temptation altar calls to get in get involved in with church the church's ministry altar calls to become uh, saying altar calls asking if they want to say yes to the missionary call so many altar calls and we praise god for each of those altar calls each time i gave it there was no guarantee that anybody would raise their hand but god wowed me and one time in vijayawada i think we had 500 people answer the altar call there are times when 80% of the audience have said yes to the altar call there are times when the response wasn't that much but still i was ready to give it for that one person who would make a specific commitment to draw one more step closer to jesus so we thank god for all these altar calls so that is the story of our journey our journey this last 16 years and now with everything becoming virtual and we have had these zoom meetings zoom meetings we organize live q and a's best and thirst friends truthfully and zoom meetings others invite us for uh, there was a seminar which was titled torn by porn and i just preach on what the bible teaches on porn and answer specific questions like you know uh, one woman asked a question like this uh, my husband is a wonderful man but his only problem is occasionally he watches porn how do i handle this situation real questions like that uh, i could answer in those zoom webinars uh, i have joined a group of pastors i work with closely in chennai to uh, fight false teaching and that's another emphasis of false teachings like hypocrisy immortality on earth annihilation or the teaching that you go to hell and stop existing in hell and you you don't experience conscious torment i have fought against all such false teaching uh i have specifically chosen hell populating po- false teachings as i call them because these teachings are very dangerous and will any people believed on these teachings and acted upon them they would go to hell uh, and i've tried to uh, distinguish between false teachings that are not help populating like different methods of communion and so on and so forth uh, so thank you for your journey with us as we stayed in hyderabad for 16 years and did the ministry and now we head to chennai and we will pretty much do the same thing the only thing is we will be closer to our aging parents my dad and mom my wife's dad and mom both of whom are actually missionaries uh retired missionaries but still active in the ministry stationed in velour which is a 2 hour or 2 and a half hour car drive from chennai so it gives us an opportunity to be around them should they face any challenges and they are facing some health challenges my son uh, is just finished his 12th so he will go to college maybe in chennai or elsewhere my daughter has just got admission for uh, in a school in chennai so i am grateful to god for your faithful journey with me through prayer through giving through that whatsapp reply through through that email reply through that instagram comment through that facebook comment and thank you for us encouraging us as we tried to grab the google generation from going to kehna god bless you